Hi brothers and sisters. I wanted to share a little bit um, of teaching today on um, a subject that the Lord has had to work with me on quite a bit since I started my walk with Him in 2011. Um, and the subject is unforgiveness. And unforgiveness is something that we are required as Christians to do, as followers of Jesus Christ. We're required to forgive others because God forgave us. In, in His image, we should be showing the world who He is and um, reflecting Him. And um, forgiveness is a big thing. So when we have unforgiveness, it, it stunts us and it keeps us from growing with God. So I just wanted to kind of go over a few things and, and hope that this would um, bless someone. Actually, I was praying today and asking the Lord what to talk about today. And the Lord said, unforgiveness. He didn't even, didn't even flinch. He said, unforgiveness. So the first thing I wanted to say is that forgiveness is for you. It is not for the person that has wronged you. Forgiveness sets you free from bondage. So a lot of people think, well, I'm not going to forgive them because they are the ones that are the issue, or they hurt me, or they said this, or they did that. But holding on to unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Um, unforgiveness doesn't do anything except hinder you. Um, another thing that unforgiveness does is it causes resentment. It causes you to have feelings of resentment towards the person who wronged you. And eventually that resentment will turn into a root and it will begin to plant itself within your soul or a root of bitterness will then begin to take hold and that root of bitterness will hold you hostage to bondage it will keep you from moving forward it will keep you from being able to share the love of Christ it will have you act out in ways that is unchristlike, and you won't be able to love unconditionally because that bitterness that's within your heart is is going to stay there. Um, Matthew fifteen eleven says, <laughs> "Sorry, sorry, guys. <laughs> Hi, Grace. Matthew fifteen eleven says, not what goes into a man." defiles him but what comes out of his heart defiles him so the root of bitterness actually goes into our heart and that is what defiles us that is what keeps us from truly allowing the, the Lord to come in and cleanse our heart um, there was there's scripture that talks about the scribes and the Pharisees came to Jesus and they said you know, how come, um, you know, the others are not washing your hands and they're eating meals without washing their hands? And, and Jesus said to them that that's not what defiles a man because what goes in through the mouth is actually released through the body. But what comes out of the mouth actually comes out of the heart. And that's where the bitterness roots in is in the heart. Um... Once bitterness has rooted in our hearts, then it causes us to anger. It causes us to have hatred. It causes a lot of um, deep-rooted feelings that are not of God. And Jesus said that if we have any hatred in our hearts towards anyone, that um, the hatred is the same as murdering. So that's not something that we're supposed to have. No hatred, no anger. Those are not things um, from the fruits of the Spirit. Um, Hebrews 12, 14 through 16 says, Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, thereby many being defiled. So, Unforgiveness leading to the root of bitterness is 
something that defiles many of God's children because they refuse to let go of something. Um, I know because I had I had my own issues with forgiveness. Um, I don't want to name any names just in case you know this ends up coming out onto social media anywhere. But I wanted to you know just share that for years, um, actually for about. 15 years there was someone within my life that I had a lot of bitterness and anger towards and I had resentment and hatred and when this person walked around me and I I see this person almost daily and when this person walked around me I cringed inside the amount of disgust that I had was horrible and I held on to it and it only grew and festered within me and about Three months ago, the Lord had me um, go to that person and had me confess to that person the way that I had treated them and the feelings that I had. And when I did that, it released me from what had been growing within me. And now I only have love towards that person. It's completely gone. That angst, that anger, that hatred, that disgust I had towards them is gone. It's completely gone. And I realized that that was not me. It was the root that had been planted that I allowed to grow within me. And once I dealt with that root and allowed it to be ripped up and I forgave that person, then I was able to move forward. So it's really important that um, we listen to the Lord. You know, if you put somebody on your mind that you need to forget or something you need to do to walk in forgiveness, then you need to do that. Um... This is something else that it really um, spoke really loudly to me. Matthew 7, 1 and 2 says, Do not judge so that you will not be judged. For in the way you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. So whatever you give to somebody, however you judge them, whatever measuring stick you measure up to them will be measured against you. And when we start measuring against people, that's when we begin to fail because there will always be somebody further ahead of you. There will always be somebody that's not quite where you are. So that's not the right measuring stick for us to have. We shouldn't be measuring ourselves against our brothers and sisters or against non-believers. We should be measuring ourselves against Jesus Christ because that's who we need to be reflecting, not each other. We need to reflect the Lord and Savior. Um, just a couple more scriptures here. Mark eleven twenty five through 26 says, Whenever you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone, so that your Father in heaven will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you. So that's really important because people think that they can hold on to these grudges. They can hold on to this resentment and allow it to grow into bitterness and think that they're still going to be able to go to, king, to the kingdom. God made it very clear in his word that he forgave us our sins and we have no right to hold on to anything and harbor unforgiveness. We have to forgive our brothers and sisters because if we don't, God will not forgive us. And we're only fooling and deceiving ourselves if we think we can harbor hatred and anger in our hearts. We can not forgive somebody for something they've said or done to us and think that we can go to the uh, kingdom with God. It won't happen, brothers and sisters. Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other as God in Christ has forgiven you. And then Colossians 3.13 says, Just as the Lord forgave us, so also should you. So forgiveness is not an option with us. It is something that the Lord told us we have to do. So the question you might be asking is, well, how do you forgive? How can you forgive somebody that said something to you that's absolutely horrible? How can you forgive somebody that has um, wounded you so deeply? And, and let me tell you, um, I'm going through a trial in my life right now where the Lord's teaching me something. And the Lord used somebody very, very close to me to hurt me very deeply. And through this, the Lord showed me how to forgive and the first thing that he said is you need to let it go quickly. 
the more we hold on to something, the longer it begins to have to root within us and the harder it is to get it out. So we have to learn to let it go quickly. How do we let it go quick quickly? The first thing is we have to pray for that person. Scripture says that we need to pray for our enemies. So that's what we need to do. Pray for the person that hurt you. Pray for those who wrongfully accuse you, those who spitefully use you. Pray for them. And then the second thing, or I'm sorry, the third thing is don't replay the issue over and over and over and over again in your mind. That is something that I used to do. When somebody did something to me, I would, and not because I wanted to, but the enemy would come and tap me on the shoulder and he'd be like, hey, you know, you haven't really thought about this for a while, you know? And the enemy would start replaying the situation in my mind. And then next thing I know, I was thinking about it over and over and over again. And then it began to fester. Then he began to take that and make more roots of bitterness in my soul because I was reliving it. But the Lord showed me that when you replay an issue in your mind, you're worrying about it. You are not believing God when he says he will resolve the issue for you or he's working on your behalf. So when you replay something over and over and over again, it's sin. You're sinning in your mind, in your thoughts. Remember, the battlefield is in our mind. It is not it's not out here. It's in our mind. That's where the enemy comes at us. And that's what we have to, to cast down. We need to cast down every high thought and every imagination that exalts itself against the living God. Oh, let's see. Another thing that the Lord showed me was don't accept the thoughts that the enemy puts in your head. If the enemy brings something and repeatedly tries to put it in your head, then you need to stand up against it. Find a scripture that you can use to speak out over your life when those thoughts come in. Um, you can pray to the Lord, find a scripture verse, um, say the scripture verse, um, sing, finding uh, a word, a song, um, a chorus in your favorite Christian song, sing it in your head. Read scripture, replace that thought or something of God and refuse to accept what the enemy is trying to plant and sow within you. Because once you allow him to plant something, once you accept that seed, if he throws something in and says, oh, you know what, what they did was horrible and you should never let them get away with that. And they embarrassed you or they did this or did that. Once you go in agreement with the devil and once you say yes you're right, Satan. That's exactly what they did. And like, oh, you know, once you do that, he's got you. He's planted that seed now and bitterness is going to begin to grow within you. And there are people that go through their whole entire life bitter because of harboring something they didn't get rid of a long time ago. So I urge you, brothers and sisters, if you're struggling with unforgiveness, it is not only a sin, it is something that will keep you out of the kingdom of God, and it is something that will keep you from working in the kingdom of God to bring other people. So um, I can testify that the Lord has completely healed me of forgiveness, unforgiving issues that I've had towards people for years and years and years, and things that the world says you have a right to be angry season you have a right to hold bitterness and judge them for things that they did to you while you were growing up your whole entire life um the lord saved me from all of that he's taken all of that out of me and right now i can stand here and say that i have no unforgiveness towards anyone the lord has relieved me from that and it is such a liberating feeling to not carry that burden anymore the lord said that he cares for you cast all your burdens upon him we were not meant to carry these things and we can't so when you cast your cares upon the lord he'll take them from you so now if you're struggling with this today then i urge you to take this to the lord in full humbleness sit before the lord and say you know what lord i can't forgive him i hurt i'm angry and I just don't know how to do this. Just tell the Lord how you feel about it. Give it to him and then say, help me, Lord. Take this root out of me. I don't want to be this way anymore. I don't want to feel like this anymore. I'm done with this. And then move on and move forward. Let the Lord work in you. Let the Lord remove the things that are in you that are hindering you from being a servant for him today. So I pray that this has blessed you. And... Um, the Lord can do all things, and you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength.
I love you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.